trying to carry what yeah. is going to happen on tonight. Uh, we're going to have some prophets that's going to share with us, and uh, they're going to be here in a few seconds, and um, they're going to kind of shed some light and an outline of what's going to happen for the next seven years. Oh. Now, now, literally, preaching this is not going to move your emotion. I have to teach you. I have to teach you in such a way that when you leave, your intellect is heightened, and you go look for answers. Okay. About your life and about what's going on. Now, listen, the Lord gave me a template for the next seven years. Now, when you start to preach stuff like this, my whole ministry is very serious to me. Just as just as the, the men of God went before God in this time for atonement. And I know uh, a lot of people have been fighting in my inbox saying, why are y'all having a young Kemper service? You're not Jews. But my God was. Come on, Jesus. Y'all ain't saying that in here. Jesus was not a Christian and neither is God. You, oh. uh, yes. you are a Christian because you are a follower of Christ. Yes. And Christ, if you know him in you his excellency, he was all law and he was all grace. Yes. He was all law because he was a Jew. Jews gave law. Uh -huh. But every time he had the law, he always extended grace. Yes. You don't believe me? Look at the ten lepers. Thank you back there shaking your head. The ten lepers, they came to him and they said, listen, I'm blemished. I'm I'm nasty. I got leprosy. And what he said was, go show yourself to the what? Okay, some of y'all went to Bible study. The rest of y'all like, I don't know what you're talking about. What is lepros? leprosy? Come on, y'all stay with me. Don't be slow tonight. And so they, he said, go show yourself to the priest. The reason he said, go show yourself to the priest was because that was the law. And so he said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill the law. And so what he did, he was so cold. He said, as they were walking, they were healed. And so they looked down at themselves and said, he said, go show himself to the priest. But before we got there, I already am healed. And so Grace said, I don't need law to heal you. But he said, because I'm all law, all grace, I'm going to tell you what to do. But before you get there, you're going to get what you got. Because you was in my presence. John is that happened. And when, y'all don't like this kind of teaching. Because you don't, you don't really understand what grace does for you. Okay. He always broke the law to his state grace. Yeah. Every time. Y'all, 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 Oh Lord, y'all don't like this kind of teaching. I can go past and say it. Go past and read. Y'all ain't saying that. I'm just playing. No, 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 no. But in our ignorance, sometimes we preach what we hear, and it's not the truth. But like some of y'all preaching cleanliness is next to godliness because the Bible says so. It ain't in the Bible. Of course. Of course. Of It said that she had five husbands. Uh -huh. It didn't say she was nasty or she was being nasty. And so when she was there with Jesus, she was a Samaritan woman that should not even speak to a man during that time. But he asked her, where your husband at? She said, she said, I ain't got me. He said, yes, you do. He said, you got this many and the one you with, you ain't with now anyway. Because you, you know, what, what's really going on? He already peeked into her future and said, I understand, woman. By law, you cannot divorce yourself. That's it. So that's why I'm extending grace to even talk to you. Because she had the spirit of rejection in her, and he did not want to reject her like her husband did. Because he realized one day he was going to be the body of Christ, which she was going to be part of. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And if she was going to be a true bride, she had to understand when he was walking on the earth, he didn't reject me like my other husband did. That's what it is. You got five husbands. It is what it is. Because five men made a decision that, oh, you can't have kids. I don't want to be with you. Uh -oh. oh, you barren. Oh, I don't want to be with you. Oh, you look ugly today. I don't want to be with you. Five men played on her self-esteem and left her. But Jesus said, I can't do that. Hey. Hey. Everybody else was around, was looking. He said, listen, if you drink of me. Hey. Hey. Already, right? I'm preaching already, right? I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. 
revelation because some people are going to be confused about what I preach about tonight. Come on. Come on here. Because you're going to say, well, I ain't never heard nobody say it that way. But there is isogetical preaching. There's homiletical preaching. There are all these things. Some preach you get mad and start to roll your eyes and suck your teeth and call your pastor a hater. But truth be told, they're trying to protect you. Yeah. And if you can just be a shit, y'all ain't saying nothing. You can actually have what you want. Yeah. Ooh. You missed it. It went right past you down 65. That's why some of you ain't got what you want because you ain't listening to the shepherd. Yeah. There is a blessing in the set place. Yeah. And when you have a set place, you have a set voice. Yeah. And when you listen, my sheep. Y'all yeah. don't like this kind of preacher, so let me, let me go. I don't know. I'm in a different place. And so the other thing you showed me about sheep, just so I can show you how revelatory the text is, and guess what? The text is silent about everything I'm saying, uh, which means that it's not there. Uh, uh -huh. He said, I reveal the mysteries of my heart to the people yes. who are close Rose to me. The, the, the message translation said, when you are my friend, I'll show you who I am. I, I taught them on Monday night at Alabama State. I'm the chaplain at Alabama State, and I taught them that when you're in the presence of God, it's called worship. Okay. You praise your way to his presence. That's it. That's it. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. But when you get in the courts, he's still far off. When you get in his face, that's called worship. And literally, worship translates in the Hebrew and the Greek to mean intimacy. Oh. Now, to the kids of children's church. And intimacy now translates Brianized to be into me see. And I'm not going to let you see into me if I don't trust you. So when you get in the presence of God, what happens is you have intimacy and you can never have intimacy and not get pregnant. So every time you get in his presence, you should come out pregnant, y'all. And he is very selective when he gets you pregnant with. When, when, when in the natural, y'all stay with me. Some of y'all gonna get caught because you got a horny spirit on you and I'm gonna help you tonight. But, but listen, whenever... Y'all knew I was crazy before y'all asked me to come. And, and whenever you have a deposit sexually with a woman, not just one thing stays. There are millions of things that stay. That, that's why, let me give you some revelation. That's why you were a victor even before you got here. Because you was one of the million. Millions didn't make it, but you were one of the ones. You still suck. You, you could have been discharged with the rest of them. But the Lord said, no, I got to bring them on to the earth realm. That's why you can't make a decision to get pregnant. Even heaven has to agree with the... Y'all ain't saying it. Even heaven has to agree with the discharge. It uh, uh, is uh, translated in the uh, Orthodox to be Yule 29, right? I'm going to get to it. I'm going slow, but I'm going to get to it. That means that it's the last biblical calendar day. That's why we're here today. That's right. Everybody think we're here today because y'all trying to be Jewish. No, we're not trying to be Jewish. This is a biblical calendar day for atonement, jubilation, uh, and release. That's right. right? And so it means that all credit will be wiped away. All debts will be wiped away. Whoa. All the financial ah. accounts of the nation will be wiped away. The Shemitah was meant to be a blessing to Israel, but when they turned against God, the Shemitah now manifested itself as judgment. Okay, that's it. And yeah. it meant that a nation rejected God, so there was a downfall of the nation. Okay? And so, so this affects us in this particular part of today because the Shemitah will affect the economy right away. That's Everybody it. say right away. Right away. Right. Now hear this. I am prophesying and I'm telling you that the Lord told me literally there is going to be a recession that's going to last more than the 12 days it did the last time the government shut down. Uh -huh. There is coming a recession. Y'all ain't saying nothing about it, but I'm really trying to help you. I mean, I'm talking about a depression, a collapse of Wall Street. Uh, we saw it the last time in just those few days people were committing suicide on Wall Street and all kind of stuff because they were used to being in control, but God allowed it to go under and crumble because he had to show them, I am God. And, and so uh, the last two Shemitahs that we've had, if you do the time, and I did a lot of studying, and I'm going to try not to get so deep into this. Y'all don't really have to come to the School of Prophets. I'm going to do six weeks on this, but I'm going to try to give you as much as I can. If you go back to 9-11, 
there was a great collapse. Yeah. Wow. And it was in the last part of the seventh year yeah. that this happened. That's it. The day before we moved into the new season of a new Shemitah, what happened was there was 9-11. Uh -huh. Now watch, the very next day, the Shemitah is so precise down to the second into the minute, the very next day, all of Wall Street collapsed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that meant that we came out of the seventh year going into a new uh, a new term yeah. and already it was collapsed. Money was already going crazy. Stuff was already going down. All kind of stuff was happening. People were trying to figure out how I'm going to get jobs, what's going to happen. Credit cards were freezing up. All kind of stuff was happening going into a new year that should have been Jubilee, but because the nation was so corrupt, God said, I can't let you go in rejoicing. I got to let you go in wailing. So you you gotta understand in the church there's a thing called well and it talked about women welling and it talked about women welling uh, only because the context homiletically was that women have a womb and welling was a sign of birthing yeah. right and so it didn't make sense to have men to well so it said that men would do things with gashing of their teeth because what happens is they got so upset about what was going on their emotions got attached to it and they wanted to change it and didn't have the authority to do so but the women said I got a womb to produce something in the earth realm that I will give birth to from the spirit realm y'all ain't saying but you can't have a well unless you have a prevail welling is not about tribulation it's about a it's about rejoicing because I prevailed over that and now I'm willing to give birth to this. Uh, uh, listen, a woman will cry when she gives birth to a baby only because it's hurting for the moment. Yeah. But the moment that the baby is laying on her chest, all the tears go away. Now listen, we don't have many welling women now, mother. It's because we got all the women. They still out there. They ain't got prevail. They, they okay. They still defeated. And you can't well if you still have defeat. You got self-esteem issues. You got trust issues. Everybody hating on you. Your mama don't like you. You got a cross eye. You got no edges. You got all this stuff going on. And so you'll never have a well because you don't have a pre -bend. Now watch this. Men is crazy because men don't well, but you should be attached to a woman that has prevailed to have the well for you because the womb was in you first. Here it is. Go back to Genesis. Y'all don't like this. It said that he went in and he took a womb man out of him. That meant that the womb existed in him, but we didn't have to have but one baby. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And we had the one baby, and now she's the carrier of the womb, but you still have authority over the womb that you gave. That's why she can't have a baby without you. No problem and all of us got our own sins and I don't judge nobody but that's why two men and two women can't do it because you gotta have a wound carrier he said this is bone in my bone flesh in my flesh that's what he went in and took out now everything else it may feel good but it ain't good it ain't right here because right I'm supposed to be talking about the shoes I'm, I'm, I'm at here 2015 and, and I'm supposed to be talking let me help you again let me just tell some of these uh, prophetic apostolic people you know they put them together now they all prophetic apostolic evangelists Pastors, prophetic apostolic princess queens, prophetic apostolic. I mean, we just got all this kind of foolishness stuff that's going on. And if you really understood the flow, you're either going to be one or the other. Oh, the boy, yeah. Now, listen, I can prophesy when the Lord allows me to, but I ain't no prophet. Yeah. You ain't going to catch me walking around here saying I'm no prophet. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There they go. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's enough prophets around here. I just show up and open portals. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I just want to establish. I want to tear up and build. If you've ever been in the presence of an apostle race, you know why people don't stand out church? Because I'm going to tell them when they're out of order. Because apostles don't like to see stuff out of order. You know. You know. You know. And so when I see it, I'll be in the pulpit with a microphone and say, sit down. Over here. Your legs, uh, uh, cover your legs up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Go. Sit behind the next row because I can see you crunch. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because the apostles ain't going to let you just sit and you order. Come on, Apostle. Apostles will come and tell you, every time you study, you only study when you got to preach. Bro. Bro. You but you don't want to study to show yourself approved, right? The Bible. Oh, you a prophetess. But every time God break it, wake you up at 2 o'clock in the morning because you service, you take Tylenol, PM, and muscle relaxers to go back to sleep. How you going to prophet? Because any real prophet got a prayer life first. Yeah. Yeah. Prophets 
are birthed in intercession. They don't just walk in caves and start prophesying. They Before the beginning of the earth, I knew who you were. I put it in you. And when you came to the earth, I don't care if you was three, you was the apostle. You were just not the manifested apostle. And you walked into, at some point, the manifestation of who you were. Even with your junk. Because gifts and callings come without. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. They don't give you a license to act a fool and do what you want just as your beliefs should bring your behavior. But he knew you was going to be saving your attitude before you... Even Paul, mother said, I had a thorn. Three times I told him to take away from me. And he said he wouldn't take it away. Because sometimes it's the reason you have the prayer life that you do is because of your thorn. It's, it's because you have these crazy thoughts that keep you praying. Come on, y'all. It's because your attitude is bad that keep you saying, Lord, if they don't get out of my face, I'm going to cuss. Come, come on. And can I be honest with you, Apostle? You may say, hey, hey, hey. Some of them deserve it. Y'all. But it's that thing that you want to get rid of because you think that's going to keep you from your calling that he said, no, I'm going to let you keep it because you nasty on purpose. Look at your name and say, can you handle the dirty version? <laughs> because if Paul had told you what he was dealing with, some of y'all would have stopped reading the Bible. Because the first time you figure out that your man or woman of God got an issue, you all of a sudden want to leave and go to a whole other church. They got the same demons, same issues, it is the thing I have covered up for a season. But all things shall come out. And don't be surprised when you gotta come back and apologize. Preach apostle! I gotta get back to some text. Preach! I think I'm a perpetual preacher. But I'm just tired of the church being bipolar and schizophrenic. One day you with me, one day you ain't. The Lord called me here and told me to help you. And the Lord told me to pay my tithes here. And the Lord told me to do this. And then you get mad when you get rebuked. And guess what? You leave. Come on. And when you really are mature in Christ, you can handle a good rebuke. Come on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You just stand there and be like, okay, you're right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All right. Get on the altar. Okay. You get on the altar and you don't say a word. Because you reverence to God in the They can do you like a dog, but the moment they call, everything go away. Come on! I had spiritual fathers that would spit on me and vomited on me and talked about my name, boo booed on me and everything. But the moment that they called and said, son, I stood up as a son. Because guess what? My heart was for them. Come on! Come on, man! You think my son, DJ, that looks just like me, gonna get mad at me and leave me and divorce me? No, he's my child. That's my DNA. Come on, man! That's why you can't have, I got this covering and I got that covering. She covered my ministry. She covered my backside. She covered my prayer line. She covered my PayPal line. She covered this. No, you see the friend bipolar and you got spiritual. Because if you can put it the right way and you're a real son, let's talk to the real sons. There's a blessing in your second place. You spend so much time with your father that you ain't got time to be flirting with nobody else anyway. You always got that heat. Where you gonna be? What you gonna do? Why you driving? What you do? Let me carry that. Let me do it. You, you do stuff for your father. You wouldn't even do it for yourself. Ain't no sons in the house. That's why y'all can't say amen. Sons call and say, what can I do? Come on. What do you need? Why are you walking around? Go get in the car. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ain't no limit to no signs. You know how many dirty shirts I pulled off and put in bags and went like, ew, ew, ew. No, because I was like, oh, maybe some virtue in this. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But it wasn't no virtue in the shirt or the sweat. The virtue was in my servant. And in my obedience, shall I be blessed? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, because it's a marriage, it's a covenant. God tonight. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Let me let me move on. Come on, prophets, y'all gotta do this. And, and uh, let me just give it to you. Where we are now? They declared uh, there was a Balfour Declaration where they gave Britain back their land. Remember that, some of y'all? Y'all not history people, okay? And so, seven speeches later, 1967 was the restoration of Jerusalem. If you go 49 years to that, it's where we are right now. 2015, 
2016. So we know that Jubilee will be the first year of the cycle. That's, and that's where we are now. Yeah. Now, in this period of release, you better store up because there's going to be okay. several periods of recession and depression. Now, God said there's some things here, and I'm going to prophesy this, and I'm going to let these prophets come and prophesy some stuff to you, and we're going to pray, and we're going to go home. But there are some things that the Lord told me. Prophet, there's one more scripture that I need you to read before I say this. If you will, please, sir. You don't mind, do you? Hallelujah. Leviticus 25. Just because I want them to be able to trace what I'm saying scripturally. Even though the text is silent, you should be able to catch this in Revelation. Are, am I helping you? Okay, we get ready to go home because y'all trying to go to IHOP and Black Fan, and I'm going to let you go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Leviticus 25, 21 through 22. I need you to read that for me. All right? This is the corporate blessing, okay? Okay. Corporate yes. prophecy. This is what the word is prophesying to you tonight. Read this for me. Then I... Then I will command my blessings on you in the sixth year. Uh -huh. And I will bring forth produce enough for three years. Yes. And you shall sow in the eighth year, in uh -huh. the eighth year, and eat old produce yeah. until the ninth year. Uh -huh. Until its produce come in. And you shall eat of the old harvest. Let me help you. I now, read now. that because the Lord said, first he has to restore you. Uh -huh. This is the corporate blessing. Um, and you may not get excited about it, but whenever you restore something, that means that it was damaged to a point where you cannot even figure out what it was. Oh. If, if your house needs to be restored because it was burned, that means that they have to literally go in and gut out everything, fix everything back up, so when they present it to you again, it's just like it was before it got messed up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And the Lord told me to tell 16 screamers that can really get excited, this is a time of restoration because everything Enemy broke. Everything that he tore up, everything that he burned down, everything that he tried to mess up, everything he tried to hide, God said, I'm going to so high five three people say restoration hit your house. Come on, that's it. Come on.